forsaken for our sins, you died and rose again. Jesus, you are the Lamb of God. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away for me. Your grace is broken every chain. My sins are gone, my debts been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me. How glorious is your love If I could sing forever It's not enough to say How glorious is your love If I could sing forever It's not enough It's not enough you gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away for me. Your grace is broken every chain. My sins are gone, my debts been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away for me. Your grace is broken every chain. My sins are gone, my debts been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me. For me. Well, good morning. We are uh, glad you're gathering with us today. And as the, the worship team sang that first song, I know some of you are still settling in and uh, trying to find your kids and all that. We just want to welcome you to worship at First Friends. Uh, some of you uh, got here way early because of, uh, you know, it, it, the, the time change and so forth. Or is it late? Which is it? Do we fall back or do we go for We fall back, yeah. I, my cell phone does that for me, but apparently it forgets to tell my daughter that she's supposed to sleep in. She still fell awake. So, uh, but we're glad you're here. We hope you're awake and ready to worship the Lord. I uh, have uh, some folks that I don't recognize today. Again, I'm, I'm still fairly new here. Uh, I came in the middle of August. So uh, if you recognize some folks that maybe you don't recognize, that sounds a little double negative. But if you see some folks, be sure and greet them sometime today. Welcome them to uh, worshiping with us. And we are glad you're here. Please stand as you're able and sing with us. One, two, three, four. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I would have let my dear Savior in. Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind. I was a fool to wander and stray. 
unto him. you for bringing us to this place together to worship you in unity and to lift our voices in praise to you and respond to what you have done for us and what you have been speaking to us. And uh, it's a great privilege to express our heart and worship to you in the presence of other believers. And uh, I pray that you bless our time together this morning. 
And we also pray that you bless the offering. Um, may it be put forward to good use for the spreading of your kingdom and so that we as a, as a local body can be self-sustaining and um, bless others. So I pray that you bless this offering um, and also be with those in Sinaloa, our brothers and sisters in Christ there, that uh, they are continually seeking you and living their lives in worship and in obedience to you and that uh, they are spreading your kingdom there and, and spreading the gospel there. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
it's the power of a simple gift. These gifts are gonna bless the children in a great way. With these very simple gift boxes, the kids look very excited and very happy. This is Christmas! It's the power of love shared through a shoebox. This is for you. When they count to three, they all open at the same time, and there's a big burst of energy. When they receive a box, it is a message of the gospel. It's a message of eternal hope. A little gift like this means everything in the world. For over 20 years, Operation Christmas Child has delivered hope to children desperate for the power of the gospel. And God gave his son to this world. I'm in a school in Bosnia. On the wall behind me are bullet holes and shrapnel holes. They just distributed many gifts to these kids. And to take these shoe boxes and see little hearts pierced and see it followed up with the truth of the gospel is so important. You'll cry a million tears, but it's worth every mile, it's worth every, every effort that's went into this. What began as a mission to children in one country has grown to reach over 100 million children worldwide. 100! The mission? To share God's greatest gift, His Son, Jesus Christ. So many children became Christian. So many families turned to the Lord. Jesus said that you don't light a candle and put it under a bushel. You put it so the whole world can see. Sparking new churches, new ministries, and new ways to reach children for Christ. It's not just you give a box and we walk away. This is long-term spiritual effect that we're having on these communities and on these countries. This is the celebration. This is the time to get ready. I've seen how the spark has been lit, and this is just the beginning of it. This is the time to reach the next 100 million. Good morning. My name is Heather Thornburg, and I'll be giving your announcements this morning. Um, so like you just saw, Operation Christmas Child is coming up. Um, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, November 16th. Um, it's always a really fun time. We pack them in the youth room. Um, a really simple act, but with such a greater and bigger purpose than, um, than we could do on our own. So not only is it a great time of fellowship, but it's just an awesome purpose. Um, so that's from 6 to 7.30. November 16th. Um, if you would like to donate items to be packed in the boxes, um, we need 300 toothbrushes, 300 tubes of toothpaste, and 300 bars of soap. So if you would like to donate items, um, bring them to the church office by next Sunday, November 13th. Uh, Nick Lamonts is a Barclay student, and he will be sharing about his missions trip uh, next Sunday, November 13th at 7 p.m. in the youth room. Um, it's a thank you presentation for his donors, but Everyone is welcome to come and hear about his transforming experience. And I am going to read this next announcement that's in your bulletin because, I, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of information. So the nominating committee wishes to inform the members of HFC of the expectations of the faith and practice regarding the structure of the roles and responsibilities within the church. Copies of information will be handed out today and were also emailed out this past week. If you still need a copy, please check with the office probably, a.k.a. Tracy. Um, on Thursday, November 10th, so this Thursday, I believe, at 7 p.m., um, Barclay is going to be having an evening of Thanksgiving and worship to celebrate how um, God has just been providing for us recently. So it'll be to celebrate God's goodness, and everyone is welcome to attend. And I think that, nope, that's not it. Just kidding. <laughs> Last page, um, the all-church Thanksgiving potluck. How could I forget about the potluck? Um, so that is November 20th. Uh, it's all-church. Um, you are welcome to come. Everyone is welcome to come. Please bring one main dish and one side dish to share. No dessert is needed because of the next thing I'm going to tell you. Um, instead of doing the youth bazaar that we do every year, um, the youth is going to do a silent auction and dessert auction during the potluck. So this is our biggest fundraiser for the spring missions trip, so this is really important. 
If you would like to bring um, gift, do gift items to donate um, to be auctioned off, um, you can bring them to the church anytime. I hope I got everything. Good morning. I'm Glenn Leppert, and I have a, an important announcement this morning from Berkeley College. In the fall of 1915, a public high school opened in Haviland, causing some on the academy board to question the need to continue the academy. With the academy building in need of extensive repairs and expansion, and uncertain whether there would be sufficient students, the board wrestled with what was best for them to do. During the fall of 1916, as the board met, they were presented with concerns from friends involved with the ongoing yearly meeting revival and the growing number of men and women moving to Halfland. Many were expressing the need for trained workers and asking that a Bible training school be established. As these concerns were voiced to the board, they were accepted as an answer to the board's prayer for guidance. On November 6, 1916, 100 years ago today, they voted to add a Bible training school to the academy program, and they sent out a call for interested friends to attend an organizational meeting which was scheduled for December 27th at the Haviland Friends Church. At that meeting, 107 men and women created and joined the Kansas Central Bible Training School Association and adopted a constitution. By mid-January 1917, the association had filed incorporation papers with the state of Kansas, and what was to become Barclay College came into being. Mindful of that resolution to create a college 100 years ago today, with great thankfulness and gratitude for the provision and the protection that the Lord has given for this endeavor on behalf of the Centennial Committee, and of Berkeley College, I officially proclaim today, November 16, 2006, November 6, 2016, the opening of a year-long celebration of the first 100 years of Berkeley College. Morning. My name is Debbie Miller, and this is my husband, Mark, and we're going to read the scripture passages this morning. I'm reading the Old Testament passage, Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Some of you may recognize that as the inspirational text that Isaac Watts used to pen the great Christmas carol, Joy to the World. So what's to be joyful about? Well, the Apostle Paul tells us in, first, in the epistle of Ephesians, and we start with verse 11 in, in chapter 1. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ 
might be for the praise of his glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you are marked with him a great seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the Lord of our, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart might be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you are called, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who everything in every way.
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. your own. You have made us your sons and your daughters, and as such, God, we get to live a life that is not just, uh, not just outwardly changed, but we are changed from within. And we have a life that is uh, constantly in communion with you. We have intimacy with you. And as your children, we have, um, we have an inheritance in the kingdom of heaven that is far beyond this world and anything that we know and we thank you for the way that you have saved us from the powers that keep us from being able to live out uh, the way that we ought to as ambassadors to the world of the kingdom. You have saved us not just for our own sake, but for the sake of the world and for the sake of the gospel. And we thank you and we praise you. And we see that your goodness shines through in every moment, in everything that, uh, in everything that we experience, God. Your hand is on our shoulder. You are with us and guiding us. And you are so good and we praise you and we can't stop praising you. 
Jesus' name. You spoke and worlds were formed. You breathed and life was born. You knew that one day you would come. So far from heaven's throne, clothed in human form, you showed the world the Father's love. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away for me. Your grace has broken every chain. My sins are gone, my debts been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me, for me. You lived a sinless life, yet you were crucified. You bought our freedom on the cross. Forsaken for our sin, you died and rose again. Jesus, you are the Lamb of God. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away for me. Your grace is broken every chain. My sins are gone, my debts been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me. How glorious. How glorious is your love. If I could sing forever, it's not enough to say. It's not enough, it's not enough, cause you gave, you gave your life away, you gave, you gave your life away, you gave, you gave your life away for me, your grace is broken every chain, my sins are gone, my debt's been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away. You gave, you gave your life away for me. Your grace is broken every chain. My sins are gone, my debt's been paid. You gave, you gave your life away for me, for me. I need all the men that are going to Sinaloa to come up front and center. All the ones that are here. Come on. In the center. I want the handsome ones in the middle. They're all handsome. And I need everybody that wants to pray for them and lay hands on them to come up and join them. Come on, tighten it up. Make a circle so they can get around you on all sides. Yeah, squish together. You guys are gonna be you guys are gonna be together for a while now, so you might as well get used to it.
All right, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for these guys, these men of God that are going to be going down to Sinaloa to encourage them down there. And we pray that you will just do your work through them in everything, everything they do, wherever they're at, at the airport, on the way, while they're there. We want you to just have your, have your hand on them and guide them in and, and whatever happens. I don't, I don't uh, necessarily want to pray for safety because sometimes when things happen that aren't quite so safe, that's when you really do your best work. But I do want to pray that you will be with them and you will watch over them and you will make this your mission, your trip. And just thanks again for these great guys. Amen. I'm Todd. I'm uh, going to be speaking this morning. It always says to introduce yourself, so <laughs> try to play along. And also, I think the children maybe get to be dismissed today. And if that's wrong, then Casey will send them back shortly. But I think, uh, I think uh, children's worship, children's church is uh, going to be dismissed now. Uh, several of the songs and the reason that uh, eight of us are going are Ocho are going, practicing my Spanish in case you didn't notice that, so uh, Ocho, Ocho Tacos, you know, <laughs> and Carne Asada, right? That's, there's one that's, there's some others I've been warned about that maybe I don't want to order kind of tacos, so I've been working on all those things, but the reason we're going is the gospel. The reason we gather here this morning is the gospel, and sometimes I think now, it's not that we get sidetracked, but we maybe just maybe get a little out of focus, and sometimes it's good to be brought back to the, the center of why we're here. The, the reason we do Operation Christmas Child, the reason we do Wednesday nights and all the good things that happen there, the reasons we show up here early on Sunday morning and cut donuts and make coffee is the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the video, I just wrote down the message of the gospel, the power of hope, the truth of the gospel that out of the Operation Christmas Child. The reason those boxes get boxed and put on planes and shipped all over the world is because the gospel is true, and it's our foundation. It's a fundamental. In a little bit, I'm going to read a scripture from Galatians chapter 1, and we'll get to that slide in a minute, but I just kind of introductory. The fundamentals are so important. When we get away from the fundamentals, we struggle. I had somebody ask me once, they said, can you do a sermon without talking about sports? And I looked at them, and I said, yes, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Actually, I did it for two months once in Grinnell because a guy challenged me. He goes, I bet you can't preach and not talk about sports. So I did it for two months. And I went up to him and I go, so what'd you think? He goes, what'd you mean? I go, I haven't talked about sports for two months. He goes, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> so my son, uh, Craig, we got together and had lunch, a late lunch with him yesterday in Kansas City. Or he was interviewing at the University of Kansas City uh, Medical School through KU. And he's doing a surgery interview. And uh, I don't know how many kinds of interviews you've had in your life, but during one part of his interview, they handed him, I think, like a fake arm with a wound on it and a needle, and they said, we're going to be interviewing you and asking you questions. Start sewing. So he had to sew <laughs> and tie knots while he's being interviewed, and then they handed him something else to sew while he's talking. And they go, wow. And he goes, then another part of it, he goes, the guy introduced himself as the director of the surgery thing, and he goes, this is going to be a blind interview. And he goes, Dad, he goes, I almost channeled my inner Todd. And he goes, I almost went, yeah, go ahead. And I go, probably not the best idea. So, uh, but fundamentals, oh, I happen to be able to get up Peyton Manning. It's a shame. But if you look at that, really, it says uh, Peyton Manning, uh, the all-fundamental team, and it says his head up and his eyes are forward. He's got the proper grip, and he keeps the ball high, and he's got the proper footwork for the, the three, five, and seven-foot drop. Fundamentals are important. It, you think about 
pitching and, and we just watched the World Series and, you know, somebody starting to struggle with throwing strikes and, and the guy that's one of the broadcast team is a former pitcher and he's talking about his release point and where he's landing his foot and all of those things. They, fundamentals are important and when things go wrong, it's good to get back into fundamentals. And now, I've got a little extra time today, so I'm going to address something that's been bothering me for a while lately. There's some things sneaking into sports that aren't part of the fundamentals. One of them is the celebration things, the unnecessary huddles. And since I've come to Kansas, I have learned to love volleyball again. Part of it is we've got, I've got to watch this fall some great volleyball. The Kiowa County High School girls were fantastic. The Barkley team was fun to watch. But why do we have to celebrate between every event? See, I, I've got a new thing. Just think how intimidating it would be. Now, bear with me, coaches and, and volleyball players. If you just, as soon as you got a point, you just went right back to your position like, we meant to do that. We were not surprised at all by that. We plan on serving our next one for an ace, too. We are back here. We are ready. Why do you have to get together and go, Whoa! and then separate? It doesn't happen in a lot. Of, I mean, now I know the football guys kind of started because, you know, they get to huddle between every play, you know. Like, I don't know what we're going to do. What are we going to do, you know? But now it's kind of transitioned into other sports. Now in basketball, after, before free throws, and, and I, we got some of the coaches here and stuff, they get together. What are they saying? We, they didn't do that back in the day. I know I sound like a crabby old man. Get off my yard, you kids. It's my... <laughs> but what do they say? We get together, hey, how about you make this one? <laughs> what, what are you saying when you're in that huddle? Hey, if you make this one, I think we should go play defense. Oh, that's a great plan. Why didn't the coach tell us that before the game? I don't think these are fundamentals of the game. Spiking footwork, you know, sets, all those, those are all fundamental. But this huddle thing, I'm, I'm telling you, girls, Kiowa County girls, Barkley girls, next year, no celebrating. <laughs> Just get back there like, she's going to do that again. <laughs> we were ready. I don't know. It's just, a, it just seems, I know there's, you know, I don't, some, it hasn't caught on in all sports. You know, I went to a cross country meet yesterday. Katie, you know, sometimes that was a really good first lap. I'm going to wait for the rest of you. We're going to huddle up and celebrate. Then I'm going to go on. You go, Todd, that really didn't... Well, some things sneak in to our Christian faith that aren't really fundamentals. Maybe they're not maybe necessary. Maybe they're not part of the gospel. And in, in, a, in a Galatians uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, Paul wrote to the church of, uh, at Galatia, and he said, I am astonished that you so quickly, that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, a non-fundamental, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Let's pray. God, today I know we've been a little silly and... Uh, God, I'm, I'm so thankful we have talented young people that can do things so much better than I ever thought or dreamed. And uh, God, I would pray your blessing upon them. But God, today I pray that you'll be with the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts as we think about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen. Fundamentals. Jack Nicholas, who Tiger Woods hasn't caught yet, said, Learn the fundamentals of the game and stick to them. Band-aid remedies never last. I think there's a lot of Band-Aid remedies out here today in our life, in the Christian life, and, and sometimes our, our fundamentals, they get a little sketchy. And uh, I'm one of those dads, uh, when my kids played basketball, I never clapped when they made a free throw. What kind of jerk are you? You're supposed to make your free throws. <laughs> They're free. <laughs> All right. I'll celebrate great defense. I'll celebrate hustle. I'll celebrate a great shot. But for Pete's sakes, make your free throws. <laughs> free throws are fundamentals. You get up there, you put one toe where you always put your toe. You put your other foot there. You know, you get your arm and you, and you do the same motion a hundred, a thousand times over and over again until you make your free throws. 
All right? And sometimes when, when we get away from the fundamentals, things go wrong. Everything has fundamentals. Business, banking, economics, music, farming, teaching, preaching, parenting, medicine. They have fundamentals. Now, sometimes fundamentals change. Uh, music has changed. Some of us haven't figured that out yet. Not that we can't still do the others, but sometimes music. Some of you go, he's talking about music. <laughs> he's done. So, but what if they had to huddle after between every song? <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's try the next one. Yeah, all right, come in on now. Sorry, I'm back to that. I don't know if it's part of so, what is part of church? And, and, and some things, as they come along, you know, there's some of us that, you know, that Roundup Ready, those crops, that's never going to catch on. <laughs> that tractor thing, it's just a phase. Sometimes fundamentals of things change, but in the gospel of Christ, it doesn't. So first of all, we need the gospels. What are the fundamentals of the Christian faith? I think first and foremost, and over and over again, it's the gospels. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I laughed, okay. This, some of you aren't familiar. This is Maslow, Maslow's chart of what you need. No, Maslow's, are the, yeah, it is, okay, right? Hierarchy, yeah. See, you guys are smart like that. And there's, the next one down is a huddle. But it's so you go self-actualization, self-esteem, belonging, and then Wi-Fi and battery life. There's a lot of times, you go, what do we need? Well, in the church, as we go forward, we need the gospel. We read that they could quickly abandon the gospel well, I kind of have the little rest of the story. The verse right before what I read to you this morning is an introductory scripture, and Galatians says this, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present and evil age. Wow, does that sound like today? Was Paul doing this prophetically? <laughs> All right, Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of the God and Father to whom goes glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul was an authority on being religious. Paul was authority on all things religious. You've, you've read and heard about his pedigree in the past, that he was an expert in Judaism and an expert in religion. He outperformed people his own age. He was extremely zealous. He had if you read in Galatians chapter 1, verse 14, in fact, he was fervent about Judaism so much that he was persecuting this new upstart thing. But this gospel, he said, that this is important. And then on the road to Damascus, he met Jesus. And suddenly his eyes that didn't see, but his spiritual eyes were opened, and he experienced the living Christ, and it changed his life. He was no longer persecuting the church. He was promoting the church and building the church and planting the church. He wrote 13 books. There's some controversy about that, but I'm on board with 13. Books of the New Testament. He found Jesus Christ. He found grace. He found the fundamentals of the faith. I, I guess as we move forward and as we think about committees, and we think about mission trips, and we think about purpose, and we think about people and programs and property and all of those things, how do they line up with the fundamentals? Sometimes when you can't hit a shot to save your life, it's good to go back to the fundamentals. Sometimes when there are fundamentals of playing the piano, there are fundamentals of being a good student, you know, it, if you come to me, you, say, you set up an appointment with me, and you come to me and you say, Pastor Todd, I want to talk to you about something. You know, I'm, I'm really struggling in, in my classwork. And, and you go through it, and I say, well, you know, when are you going to bed? <laughs> you know, two or three. How much time are you spending on social media or video games? Oh, you know, it's five or six hours a day. you got some fundamental problems, <laughs> right? Fundamentally, you're, you're, you're not practicing good fundamentals of being a good student. They're bailing wire and duct tape, and we can try to fix things, but it's good to get back to the fundamentals. And so let's not be about abandoning our gospel. And that's point number two, and it's really what I read for the introductory scripture. Paul says, I'm astonished. I'm shocked that you're so quickly, how fast we forget, deserting the one who called you. And you're turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. And evidently, there's some people throwing us into confusion. And I know we live in trying times. And, and, and I know this coming week is, is a time of we're wrapping it in prayer. And, and 
but God is still God. The gospel is still the gospel. And you say, you know, I, I know the gospel. I know it's the good news. I ain't got Christmas and Easter and, and the empty tomb and the cross and forgiveness of sin. Now I'm, I'm into learning new things. That's okay. <laughs> but be careful. Keep yourself on a pretty short leash to the gospel. Keep, keep yourself pretty, because if it happened in Paul's age, and I know they had their issues, but we got some stuff going on in the world today. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on. And the people back in Paul's age were deserting and turning other places, and confusion was reigning. So I got a couple meddling questions, and I asked myself these questions, and I didn't like them any better earlier this morning. Is some new teaching bringing you confusion or causing you pause? Then run back to the gospel. How is the state of your heart? When I was in Southern California for a year at the church plant, um, one of the guys who showed up when we made 20,000 phone calls by the way, when you make 20,000 phone calls in Southern California, you will be surprised what will show up for church. I'm just saying. <laughs> and we invited them all. 2,000 said, yeah, we'll be there. 200 showed up. But one of the great ones that showed up was a blind, charismatic piano player. But he also had the gift of, of just wanting to pray for people. And he was one of those people who prayed for you when he anointed, he would anoint you. And obviously, I need a lot of prayer because Mr. David Dobler, he anointed me about every day. He'd show up at the church office. He goes, is Todd here? I go, oh, man. And he, I had acne on my forehead the whole time I was in Southern California. But I was prayed for. And when he's prayed for, he'd come in, he goes, Todd. And he'd find me in my office, and he'd put his hands on me. He goes, how's your heart? Oh, David, I don't want to answer that question. But he has a great question. How's your heart? What's the state of your heart? Do you have peace in all circumstances? That's part of the hope of the gospel. As I've watched political ads and read the internet feed, I have to admit that I don't have a lot of peace right now. I've got to go back to some fundamentals. My fundamentals are wrong. I've gone to the gospel of worrying. The gospel of Todd can fix this. The gospel of we evangelical, I got called an evangelical fundamentalist in the last couple of weeks, and after I thought about it, I thought, that's kind of a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have peace in all your circumstances? Do you have joy coming out of your heart? Not because your life's so great, it's just because you have joy. Because you have something that the world doesn't have. Do you receive grace from others? Do you give grace to others? I'd really like to skip this one. Are you humble and quick to admit wrongdoing? No. better at it than I used to be. I don't like those questions. But the truth is, our hearts need the gospel. The truth is, no matter how long we've been a Christian, no matter how long we've been up front or teaching Sunday school or been a pastor, I need to realize that I need the gospel just as much this morning as I did in fifth grade. Walter Marshall in the gospel, The Mystery of Sanctification, sounds like a good word we'd like at Barclay and Haviland. He says, the scriptures tell you two things about living a godly life. They tell you what God wants you to do, the law, and then how you are to actually accomplish it, the gospel. I really like that. 
That's from Walter Marshall in the Gospel, the Mystery of Sanctification. The scriptures tell you two things. They tell you what God wants you to do and then how you can actually do it. What's easier for us to kind of learn? Well, the law. That's why we go to legalism. That's why people call me an evangelical fundamentalist because I get wound up in that stuff. But how we actually do it is we live the gospel out. And why we don't do it is kind of baffling to me. I sometimes think pride sneaks in. Because if we, if we admit that we're followers of the gospel and we don't want to abandon it, part of admitting that we're followers and part of the gospel story is that we're sinners. The great truth of the gospel is that God demonstrated his own love to us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's part of the Romans road in case you got lost. You need a map. The gospel tells us that God demonstrated his own love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm not calling names this morning. I'm just saying we're in it together. And then our own righteousness isn't that valuable, Paul later wrote in Galatians chapter 5. Uh, our own righteousness isn't part of the solution. Sometimes that self-righteousness is part of the dilemma. The gospel is God's unmerited favor. I think Billy Graham told it that way, that this grace comes into our lives and breaks the chains. We sang so many great songs this morning that, that just fit right in for that. Dr. Tim Keller says, so we can say that we are more wicked than we ever dared believe but more loved and accepted in Christ than we ever dared hoped, all at the very same time. If you don't get anything else today, get that this morning. So we can say, we can say this. We don't have to brag about it. We don't have to be proud, prideful about it. In fact, we probably shouldn't be. We maybe should be a little remorseful and, and wish we wouldn't have. But so we can say that we are more wicked than we ever dared believe but more loved and accepted in Christ than we ever dared hope at the very same time. There are fundamentals and there are band-aids. I think a lot of times we in American Christianity, we're into band-aids. Um, not to get too political, but a lot of politics is band-aids. It's not the gospel. As I spent time in Grinnell, Iowa with lots and lots of smart people and lots and lots of people who are into politics, I realized the new religion for those next generations of brilliant kids, those, those, that, those millennials coming up, their new religion is political power. They think it's the answer. It's a Band-Aid. The answer is the same answer it was that Paul found. Paul had power. Paul had religion. Paul had his stuff together. Maybe the answer found Paul on the road to Damascus, but it's the same answer for us today. No more, no less. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power that changed and is changing my life. It's changing my family's life for generations because of the changes it's making in me. Let's pray. God, today... Um, I sometimes think the gospel is so simple, and it is. And yet somewhere, somewhere along the line, we've made it complicated or hard. God, help us to celebrate those who found the gospel and to, to rejoice and to love and to encourage. Um, God, we don't want to miss that. But also, God, help us to not get caught up in the things that are, are side issues. Help us to get caught up in the gospel of Jesus Christ the good news for all people. Um, good news of great joy as we think about the Thanksgiving season and the Christmas season that follows. Father, in the coming months, may we be thankful. May we be thankful for Christmas. May we be thankful for the gospel, the good news of great joy. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You have five extra minutes even by Todd's timetable. Hug some people, smile at some folks, shake some hands. You're dismissed. God bless you.